Let's talk about selecting covered calls. As with any options trade, there are a few key decisions you need to make early in the process, and they're going to depend on your overall goals. The first decision you need to make is regarding which underlying stock you want to trade with. Next, you'll need to decide how far out you want to sell your calls. Finally, you'll need to pick the strike you're selling at. While there are a lot of trading philosophies out there, we have a spoiler alert. There's no right answer. It all depends on your scenario and your goals. That being said, it's very helpful to read up on some diverse opinions in order to understand the different points of view. Our goal here is just to provide you with a starting point for making these decisions and to illustrate the implications of some of the different paths you can take. First, let's talk about selecting an underlying. One thing most investors will advise is that you only work with stocks you want to own. Covered calls are an equity-centric option strategy, so your returns will correlate with the performance of the stock. If you pick a stock that steadily declines, you'll have a hard time turning a profit. The next thing you'll want to consider is whether you consider the premium available to be worth the risk. This is the most important part of option investing in general, because the profit almost always comes from you being right when the market is wrong. The best proxy for the market sentiment of a stock's risk is its implied volatility. And its options are, by definition, priced for that risk. So if you think the implied volatility for a given stock indicates that the market is expecting more risk than it's worth, then it could be a good candidate for selling calls. There are a lot of ways for evaluating the current implied volatility of a stock. One of the oldest methods is to simply compare the implied volatility with the historical realized volatility of that stock. However, just be sure you're doing a fair comparison. If one of those terms includes an earnings announcement and the other doesn't, those numbers aren't really going to line up and they'll skew on you. There are also metrics like IV rating, IV rank, and IV percentile that will give you insight as to how the current implied volatility stacks up relative to the historical implied volatility measurements of that stock. Of course, you should remember that a high IV valuation means that the market is priced for increased risk for a reason. If you want to learn more about implied volatility evaluation using these metrics, check out our video on that topic. It's also useful to screen for upcoming earnings and dividends. Some investors prefer to avoid earnings altogether, and others want to avoid selling calls that might be in the money when an upcoming dividend hits. Our tools at Quantia.com include stock and trade screeners that make it really easy to filter by underlying properties, such as fundamentals, technicals, and option-centric metrics. For example, you can filter out stocks with poor option liquidity. An important measurement to look at when considering option trades is theta, which represents time decay. It simply tells you how much an option will be worth if you evaluated its value using the same pricing technique, but one day closer to expiration. At the stock level, theta scales with implied volatility. That means that at-the-money options for a high IV stock will have a higher theta relative to similar options for a low IV stock. Since an option loses value over time, buying options gives you a negative theta, whereas selling gives you a positive theta. Since we're talking about selling calls here, you stand to benefit from the passage of time, so your theta will be positive. So how does this all relate to picking a call to sell? Well, it starts with the term you select to sell at. Again, there are a lot of opinions out here, but the general consensus is that you want to sell options around 30 to 60 days from their expiration. This is based on the notion that theta decreases faster and faster as you approach the expiration date. As a result, selling options longer than 60 days will not burn off very quickly, while options shorter than 30 days will have already burned off much of their theta. Here's an example of a typical stock trading around 100 with an implied volatility of 40%. This chart plots the theta of at-the-money call options expiring at future terms ranging from 1 to 9 months. As you can see, the theta for its calls are highest when the calls are expiring the next day which quickly declines until it's nearly flat around the 40 to 5 day mark. This is largely why investors prefer to sell in that 30 to 60 day window. Another important consideration for selling calls is that monthly options, which are those expiring on the third Friday of a month, 
tend to have better liquidity than weekly options. This fits in nicely if you're looking 30 to 60 days out, since that monthly option is often the only term to sell. However, there are some important risks to consider when selecting a term for your covered calls. The most obvious are when there are major events that could impact the value of the underlying stock, such as earnings announcements. Another factor is the presence of an ex-dividend date. If you're short an in-the-money call when the dividend is about to hit, you should expect to get assigned if that dividend is worth more than the time value remaining in the option. It's an important note, which is why we repeat it a lot. Finally, you won't be able to sell the stock until you close the short call position it's covering. This is an important factor since buying back a liquid calls could cost you enough to chew into your profits. If you're using our trade screeners, it's really easy to select the term range you want to screen across. This makes it easy to find trades that meet your other parameters and end within that window. You also have the option of comparing the trades using annualized returns so that you get a more realistic ranking of a 30-day trade relative to an alternative 60-day trade. We talked earlier about theta, the Greek that represents an option's sensitivity to the passage of time. Another important Greek, arguably even more important, is delta. Delta measures the sensitivity of an option's price relative to the price of its underlying. It's calculated similar to theta in that you run the same pricing model over again to determine how different the value of an option would be if the underlying were trading a dollar higher. Alternatively, you can measure delta by calculating the difference in an option value based on the underlying trading 50 cents higher versus 50 cents lower, and so on. The important thing here is to use deltas that are calculated consistently. Delta provides a rough approximation of the likelihood that a call will expire in the money, although it's not that exact. And in the end, the probabilities really are just market sentiment. For example, the call struck at the forward price of the underlying should have a delta of 50 cents and is referred to as the 50 delta call. Let's also talk about what the forward price is. It has a subtle distinction from the current underlying price because it represents what price the market views as the fair value of the current stock at a future date. It assumes that the stock will have a mean appreciation based on the risk-free rate of interest, and it also assumes that the price of the stock will decline by the amount of dividends between now and then. The resulting price is what the market views as the at-the-money strike for the sake of pricing options. As a result, you should always assume that interest rates and upcoming dividends are already priced into options. Now, once you've identified your target underlying and your term, you'll need to pick a strike to sell. This is often strategy-driven since you might always want to sell the call at a given delta. Otherwise, you might use delta or other implied volatility-based metrics to sell a call due to its probability of expiring in or out of the money. Or you might prefer to sell a specific moneyness, such as 5% out of the money, which should be relative to the forward price, not the current. Whatever method you use to select the strike to sell at, you'll want to make sure that you're getting enough theta for your risk. Here's a plot of the 57-day call thetas relative to their strike price. As you can see, the most theta is available at the money, and it declines as you get further away. People can, and do, sell calls everywhere along the strike spectrum. It really depends on your goals. Let's start off by talking about selling calls out of the money. These calls have the lowest likelihood of getting assigned. However, they offer less time value and less downside protection than others. The good news is they offer more room for your underlying stock to appreciate, so there's a lot of potential for profit if the stock increases. That's why these tend to be the most popular since they fit nicely into the bullish view most covered call investors have on their stock. Let's take a look at an example. We'll buy 100 shares of a stock and sell the 110 calls expiring 60 days out for $1.50. We expect these calls to expire worthless and we'll give the stock plenty of room to move up. Here's what the payoff looks like relative to just owning the stock. The probability of profit is near 60% and there's an average weighted return of about 2%. However, the minimal downside protection means that we're still looking at an 11% decline if the stock were to make a one volatility movement downward. This would be a good trade if we expect a steady increase in the stock. 
So now what happens if we sell an at the money option instead? At that point, it's really a coin toss as to whether the stock gets assigned. Since there's no room for the stock to appreciate, the profit potential is just the time value of the option. It's the same for the downside protection. Let's return to our example from earlier. But instead of selling the 110s, we'll sell the 100s for $5. Now we end up with a payoff that doesn't have the potential of before, but has more downside protection. We could expect to turn a profit two-thirds of the time, but the average weight of return is slightly less than before. However, we've significantly improved our risk from a one vol drop to around 8.5% as our loss. This is a good trade if we don't necessarily care about owning the stock, but want to profit from the implied volatility on the stock, we don't expect to move too much. Now let's move the strike down a little further and think about selling calls that are already in the money. These are very likely to be assigned. However, there is the possibility that the stock could drop significantly, which would put the options out of the money and soften the decline by a lot. Unfortunately, they have little upside, since the theta for the in-the-money calls decreases as you get deeper. Using our example from earlier, let's analyze the returns if you sold the 90s for 11.50. That might seem like a lot, but keep in mind that the forward price for the stock is around 101. So the time value offered here is really just 50 cents. And that's because there's an 80% probability that the option will expire in the money. It would take a significant drop in the underlying before this trade lost money. But there's very little upside since any stock gain would be canceled out by the calls. This would be a good trade if you were willing to forego any upside potential in favor of the significant downside protection. For example, you might consider this a stock you'd be happy to sell today at its current price, but would buy back if it dropped below 90. That's basically what you're doing here. Our trade screeners offer a variety of filters to make it easy to zero in on option trades based on moneyness, delta, and other option-specific criteria. You can also review any trade based on these properties, whether you filter for them or not. So to summarize, there are three key decisions you need to make when selecting a covered call. First, Screen for your underlying, then select the term you want to work with. Finally, optimize your strike for your strategy. And if you have any questions, please leave us a comment below or reach out to us at hello at quantia.com. As always, good luck and good hunting.